This conference will now be recorded. A very good morning to one and all. Honorable Chairman Sri Janakunta Baswas, sir, beloved principal, Dr. Esam Sheshadar, sir, respected HOD of CSE department, Dr. Parsham Barki, sir. Our esteemed resource person, Mr. Padnima sir, Senior Director and Chief Transmission Officer for Retail Engineering at Publicis Safe in Bangalore. And co-owners of this webinar, Professor Vasantama Madam and Professor Prashant K. Sir, and teaching and non-teaching staff of CC Department and my dear participants. I am Magdash Kamtar, Assistant Professor of CC Department and co-owner of this webinar. I heartily welcome you all for this one day national level uh, webinar on emerging trends in data analytics organized by the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Rauda Devaraya, Institute of Technology, Hasapete. We begin this function with a welcome speech. Now I request Professor Vasantama, Madam, and a co editor of this webinar to give a welcome speech. Over to you, Madam. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning to one and all. A warm welcome to all. I welcome our Honorable Chairman, Sir, Sri Janekunte Basura, Sir, and management who have been a continuous support to us. I welcome our respected principal, Dr. S.M. Sheshidhar, Sir, who motivated us for conducting this webinar. I also welcome our Bilard HOD, Dr. Parshram, Sir, who always stood by us for conducting this webinar. I welcome Mr. Pradyumna, who is a resource person of today's webinar. Pradyumna is a senior director and chief transformation officer for retail engineering at Publicis Sapient. He leads global delivery across retail and data engagements. He is seen as a trusted client partner in digital business transformation engagements, solving business problems across US, UK, Europe, Middle East, APAC, and Australian subcontinents. He has successfully seeded strategic business initiatives, transforming them into profitable service offering and COAs. He has two decades of experience in consulting, client success, and senior management roles. As an entrepreneur, he built products for veterinary healthcare industry. He has managed product strategy and delivery, large scale complex programs, PMO, captive unit and business operations. His experience spans across veterinary healthcare, semiconductor design testing and production, financial services, retail, automobile, travel and hospitality, telecom, government services, business operations, product management, media, and other domains. He has a bachelor's degree in computer science and engineering and master's in marketing. He is an active PMI certified PMP with certifications in Scrum, SAFE, Agal, Indian Institute of Banking and Finance, Dunn and Bradstreet Finance, Investment and Security Certified. He with expertise in strategy, consulting, pre-sales, delivery, account management, P&L, operations and PMO, capability building, capacity planning, resource, resourcing, partnership and vendor management. He represented India as a cultural and vocational ambassador in UK for a Rotary GSC program. He is a passionate wildlife photographer and avid traveler. He is also into trekking, badminton, cricket, cycling, and off-roading. He pursues Carnotic classical music, theater, poetry, and natural forming. I also welcome our staff members and our valuable participants of today's webinar. Hearty welcome to one and all. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for welcoming all the dignitaries of today's webinar to all of us. Thank you once again, Madam. Now I request HOD of CSC department Dr. Parsham Barki, sir, to give brief insight of today's webinar. Over to you, sir. Good morning to one and all. I welcome Honorable Chairman Sri Janakunte Basra, sir, our beloved principal, Dr. S.M. Shashida, sir, 
and even i thank for the support and motivation i appreciate mr pratibna today's resource person senior director and chief transformation officer publicis sap in bangalore for accepting our invitation as a speaker i congratulate all the coordinators professor rosanthama madam malte sir prashant sir for their effort in conducting this webinar i welcome all the faculties staff and student of csc family proudadeva institute of technology hospitality i also welcome all the participants for this webinar today we know the importance of data its usage and application in various fields keeping this in mind we plan to conduct this webinar i request all the participants to enjoy the session and have the comfortable stay with us thank you thank you one and all over to malte sir thank you sir for your valuable words now i request our below principal dr sm shashidhar sir to speak few words over to you sir thank you a very good morning to all the participants i congratulate and appreciate the department of computer science and engineering of prodevaraya institute of technology hod dr parasharam barki professor maltesh professor vasanthama professor prashant kogli and all the faculty members for their initiative to host this webinar data analytics data science is a booming field to pursue your career right now as the covid-19 pandemic continues the sociological and economic effects become evident and thus many nations businesses and individuals are exploring coronavirus recovery strategies based on data analytics hence data analytics has gained a great significance in today's world my compliments to shri pradyumna the resource person of today's webinar and pdit is grateful to shri pradyumna for accepting our invitation for this webinar i hope the participants will be benefited with great insights about data analytics thank you all and over to professor malpesh thank you sir for uh, your encouragement and valuable words now we begin the session uh, i request all the participants to uh, mute your audio uh, soon we are going to start the session now i request uh, mr pradyuma sir uh, senior director and chief transformation officer retail engineering uh, uh, pub at publicis sapient bangalore uh, i request mr pradyuma sir to uh, begin the session over to you sir Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, just want to check if I'm audible. Yes, sir. It's audible, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Another request: uh, if you can help me enable the screen share, I yes, have. Yes, sir. Eleven minutes. Sure. Uh, I can share across. Firstly, thank you for the opportunity to, you know, speak to the great audience here. I know you know you you guys have been grooming a lot of students and. Uh, they are the next incoming generation for all the industry what we actually consume for right and uh, it's also a great initiative to see institutions like this to embrace the latest and the greatest of the technology the latest trend benefit faculty and students but also in turn benefit the industry again thank you for the opportunity and uh, let me just uh, start sharing my screen so that i can uh, start off with the discussion sir i've assigned you as uh, a presenter you can start the screen sir now you can share the screen now okay okay uh, are you able to see the screen yes sir okay participants can you say so is it visible yes sir it is yeah. visible sir yes yes sir yes visible yes thank you okay thank you pradeep sir can start sir okay yeah uh, so as uh, the principal already mentioned uh, that data is potentially the new electricity or the new oil how they call it right now with the oil prices coming down so let's treat data as the new electricity right it is something which is needed for every industry for every business and without data usage as part of how they strategize in in every industry the organizations are going to be left behind okay so with that i'm just going to talk about few uh, statistic information and few of the transformational things which has made why data is so important today and then uh, i'm going to also touch upon a little bit of uh, how the industries are leveraging data 
in terms of uh, their transformation journey. And then I'm going to also go into what does this mean from a technology standpoint and how people or students or even the academics can adopt this from a practical world scenario. Okay, in case if you have any questions, probably we can, uh, you know, give a last 10 minutes uh, for question and answer session. So I'm hoping I'll, I have at least another 45, 50 minutes to talk through this. Yes, sir, definitely, fine? sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about a little bit of a disruption, why data has become so important today and uh, how the industries are using data and also the technology trends from a data standpoint. So if you just uh, start with a little bit, uh, in, in the last couple of years, we had demonetization, right? So I'll just start with a little bit of a fact story in here is when we had demonetization, there was all chaos across the uh, country and uh, some people were uh, really impacted. Some people uh, did not get impacted at all. And those were the people who were, did not get impacted were the people who had already embraced digital. For example, phone pay, Paytm, uh, you know, Beam app and uh, internet banking, internet uh, mobile banking and all of that. People who adopted this even the street vendors who actually embraced and adopted Paytm and uh, you know digital payment systems, they were the least impacted. If you just look at the statistics so far this year, from January until June, what do you see the number here that 69.2 million USD is the total amount of digital transactions which has happened in India, right? And uh, you see the uptick there, right? Uh, it's 28 and a half percent close to increase from what it was last year. So what what does it also state us is there are people who are adopting digital payments and the digital way of uh, living and breathing, which also translates to 598 and a half million users, which is again an increase of uh, 12 and a half percent across the country who have uh, adopted and embraced digital payments. One thing we need to note in here is all these technologies are being adopted is because the consumer is driving it. It's all about what is the convenience as customers, as consumers, how are we reacting to some certain things? And due to those reactions, the companies need to know like how the customer is going to react and adapt to, do, to those uh, reactions. And people are the organizations which can, which can do this early on will be the leaders, people who take time will be the laggards. That's how it is. So let me just tell you another story. I think the logo, what you see here, the I've just picked up some of the prominent ones. There are a lot more logos like this. Let me start off with Apple. Most of the people uh, here on the call uh, know what Apple is all about. Uh, if you just look back, when they released iPod, iPod disrupted the whole industry of cassettes, CDs, and the Walkman, right? A, a people who have been uh, uh, used to these have seen those things. You can relate to how this really disrupted. And why did why did Apple choose to do a iPod? And then you can now see over a, a period of time, you have Ghana, you have uh, multiple other uh, uh, providers who where you can go and pick and choose the songs and play only the song which you really need. Earlier, what it used to happen was, you had to buy the whole CD, though you may like one or two songs in the whole album, but you had to purchase the entire album. So you did not have a choice as a customer that I want only a selected set of uh, you know songs which I want to listen. So that's one of the disruptions, how Apple saw what customer wanted, and then from an iPod, they moved into an iPad, and then into an iPhone and all of that. That's that's history again. Netflix, uh, I don't know how many of you know about Netflix and Amazon. These are two actually technology companies, if you really look at it, right? But now they are known for, uh, Netflix is known for uh, streaming data, or uh, streaming uh, you know movies and all of that, streaming content. Amazon is mainly known for as a retail, but Amazon started as selling books. Why, why did they become more successful was they were able to reap the data, what the customer wanted, and they had all of that data to make sure they are 
ahead of the curve in terms of looking at what customer expectations were and also move in that direction. Google is a, another classical example. I already spoke about Paytm. Paytm was probably the most uh, used after demonetization immediately and they encashed on it big time. Airbnb and Uber, again, a transformational idea driven by technology and data. They don't own any assets, but they are driving the entire business model through technology and through data. Okay. So why we, when we are talking about this data and uh, when you actually look at how these data decisions are made, one thing we need to understand is how much of data is available with us. So mm -hmm. if you really look at it on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. uh, there is close to mm -hmm. 2.5 terabytes of data and 44 zettabytes of data which is being generated across the globe and if you really look at internet penetration there is a 57 percent increase over the last year to this year in terms of people adopting to internet so that's the amount of data which is being produced and where is this data being where is the data coming from it's coming from twitter news channels uh, facebooks google you name it, your devices, your phones, your wearable devices, even your TV, whatever we watch, it's now all digital. So people can look at what a person or a household is watching at a certain point in time and uh, how that is being translated. So the PRP and all of what we talk about or what we hear is also based on data. So there is huge amount of data uh, which is being generated uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. The next question is, how does it all relate to us? Because this data is generated by people. And when it comes to businesses or even governments, right? People are nothing but customers. Government is serving its people. So you can treat them as your customers. Based on that, they are providing uh, or they are making policies. They are providing services. They are making uh, initiatives, infrastructure, uh, be it infrastructure, be it uh, you know customer policies, be it data governance policies, be it uh, foreign policies, even the budgets, all of that is based on the data what is available. So if you really look at it, how does this data get generated from people is when, uh, let's take an example. If I want to uh, you know go from my house uh, to my office, I take a certain route on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe I take, a, uh, I have to travel say 15 kilometers a day, I take a certain route. And in that journey, there are options or possibilities that I meet up with, you know, traffic at certain point in time, catch up with some friends, or maybe I stop for a while to take a break and take a coffee or something like that, right? So this is my journey from my office to home or home to office. And during this journey, I am actually leaving a footprint. In the sense, every day I take this journey and I'm leaving a footprint uh, uh, during this journey. The same thing happens on the digital side. And what are these footprints? When we browse over a phone or our laptops, there is a digital footprint. You, you have heard of cookies. So cookies really capture that data. And now there are imprints in terms of pixels, which is also doing the same thing, similar to cookie where it captures the data, what a customer did. Say, if I log into Amazon at this point in time, many of you would have shopped in Amazon or any internet uh, uh, you know, shopping uh, uh, websites. When I go into Amazon, I would have done a search. When I'm trying to look after, after a couple of days, I come back and then I'm looking for something else, there is a recommendation bar which comes in based on my previous search. And a simple example is Google. When when you're uh, you know getting into Google, when you start typing, Google is already making sense and completing your word, and then it is already bringing up things which you may prefer or what you have previously searched for. How does this happen? Is again, this is based on the footprint we as consumers, we as people, leave in the digital world, and every action, everything, every uh, click every browse every selection everything leaves a footprint in the digital world for every one of us and if you really look at it this is how you know if you talk about like uh, the latest one arogya setu app uh, it asks for a you know enable your bluetooth and it 
typically tracks where all you have been moving and was there anybody closer to you who was having a corona infection and he was somewhere nearby based on the bluetooth connection and based on the geography location that's how arogya setu app also is trying to work towards so technology is enabling us on a day to day basis from a convenience standpoint from a transformation standpoint and even it is also creating a lot of disruption in businesses one of the disruptions i would want to call out is kodak kodak uh, if people have used uh, kodak cameras in the past uh, the analog cameras i'm not talking about the digital ones when you take a picture you had uh, uh, to get it printed on paper and kodak's main business was not cameras but they were doing a lot of uh, uh, paper printing and they were the first ones who actually invented the digital camera as well but since they were doing a lot of uh, paper business they did not focus on the digital thing and they always took that as a second priority over a period of time kodak is no more existent similarly xerox that company again is no more existent so you can see multiple instances nokia is another one now motorola is another one where they did not really see the trend and they did not pick up those uh, uh, you know insights from the data what the customer wants and all those companies have now either shut shop or they have gone into like a major reduction in terms of task force and where they are so whatever we do one thing we need to understand is we are leaving a footprint and when i talk about that footprint that is nothing but data when i am browsing something i am actually leaving that data for example i am browsing something on google and next time when i come back google recognizes it's me and then it starts giving me a recommendation based on what i did in the past there is another angle to it when we talk about like privacy security and all of it it's a debatable one there is a lot of debate happening in that direction like uh, do the companies need to be using it not using it to what purpose in china they even do monitoring of people uh, so some people say it is unethical so that's a longer debate we are not going to touch upon that today uh, just to give you another sample where all the data is going to be generated uh, earlier we used to have alarm clocks but now we use our cell phones as alarm clocks right at least i use it right so that is again when i you know put an alarm for 5 am in the morning then my phone knows that i wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning every day so that's a behavioral data uh, what i'm generating then we use uh, fitbits we use our phone while we are walking to know how many steps we have walked in the day to day life to be sure we are fit and that is where the health or habit data is captured we read newspapers on multiple channels preferences data and if we are uh, picking up coffee and all of that and if the machine has a iot in you know integrated into it it gives you what type of coffee you need how many uh, coffee uh, uh, cups do you uh, consume each day all of that wearables again gives you a lot of data in terms of uh, what is uh, your behavior where all you have been doing and similarly automobile health your uh, you know shopping practices everything generates data and that is a gold mine for organizations to literally figure out what each and every customer wants and then accordingly design their products or target their products so that they are beneficial i'll just pause here for a moment just to make sure i'm audible and everything is going fine and then i'll continue is that all okay yes sir sorry okay thank you and that's where we talk about the new identity right uh, when i'm talking about new identity wherever we are using our cell phone if we are carrying it all along then we are leaving our footprint everywhere so that do banking from cell phones we are able to do calls pretty much your cell phone is now something which enables you to do most of your activities even transactions and all of that uh, and that's that's where your new identity starts uh, you know en enabling yourself so now coming on to the data right so now that we spoke about all of this data is out there how do companies really leverage this data and uh, how do they make differentiation out of it in data we have like three uh, i'll just introduce a concept here uh, for people 
in data, there are three kinds of data which we talk about uh, from an organization standpoint. One is a first party data where a company is directly interacting with the customer and directly getting information. That is the first party data. Okay. And uh, there is a second party data where the company is interacting with another partner and that partner is interacting with the customer. So they are getting indirectly the customer information that is second party data. And third party data is if I go to Google and then I ask Google, hey, how many people visited my website today? They will not be able to give you who all visited, but they will be able to tell you, hey, there were two and a half million people who actually came to your website and they did XYZ things third page or the fifth page was the most viewed page in your website. So this kind of data is called the third party data. And when you take all this data and start making sense and stitching this data together, that's when you'll be able to get actionable insights. And that is the differentiator for companies. The more the information they have for people or their customers, the better they will be able to serve them. Again, I'll give you a, another very, very local example. The reason I'm bringing a local example is uh, the COVID situation. Uh, we were always uh, boosting, hey, you know, I just order something on the internet and I'm going to get it, right? But with the current pandemic, we saw some of these will work, but some of these are not really up for scale. We need to really do some work in terms of making sure those systems are correct. And that's where the local flavor came into picture in the sense the store next uh, ne next road or next to my house that person probably knows me individually and he knows my preferences he knows what i'm going to buy on a monthly basis or a weekly basis so he's able to come and tell me address me with my first name and say hey this is what you need here is what that you know you want this here is what i have for you already uh, identified so that's the personalized, uh, uh, you know, uh, touch which your uh, uh, business person is giving you or which your shopkeeper is giving you. That's the same scenario which the big companies are trying to adopt in the digital world. I was talking about the physical world, but the same uh, scenario is what Amazon's or Google's or every big company is trying to do. How can I really know every individual customer so that I can bring a differentiation to him or her based on what their choices are. So that's where differentiation and actionable insights come in and how to leverage the data we'll probably see a little uh, further down. So now uh, we spoke about data, we spoke about uh, actionable insights, but why is that really needed? Why do you need this data? We also spoke about for personalization, making sure you understand the customer better so that you are able to serve uh, the customers uh, well and this can also be for governments okay uh, in one of my uh, uh, previous work i i worked for a uh, uh, european government where uh, we were trying to help them analyze their data for making some of the policies the, some of the policies maybe for and this was some time ago like a year year and a half ago is uh, some of the policies were data privacy policies. Some of the policies were uh, related to climate change policies. So they used to circulate surveys and based on those surveys, they were trying to get, uh, you know, the pulse from their citizens and then try to make some of those policies. That's how the data is used from a government and policymaker standpoint. From a business perspective, it's used from a business, uh, uh, you know, enrichment perspective. So ultimately, what is it used for? Data can be used for, on a broad category, three places. In the sense, you look at a historical thing, you have the data, and then you figure out what has happened in the past, right? Uh, a classical example is your sales data, or uh, uh, if, if you really look at uh, uh, your examination marks cards, how did, the perf uh, how did the student perform in the past is your past data, what has already happened? Why did it happen is based on X number of factors, right? And that gives uh, a perspective or a peek into the data also gives a peek into why it happened. The third one is what is going to happen. It's like predictive, prescriptive and uh, things like that in the sense, what is going to happen? Okay, now I 
foresee that something is going to happen now what can i take actions against to make sure yeah, it is in yeah, Right. So as you move from left towards right, so Adha Kumara la. Sai Kamika is that here? Adha Kumara. That extension Kumara. I am not the extension guy. Adha Kumara is that one. I tell you, Ali Gaur is the artist. Get together, right? So Adha Kumara. Yeah. Ali Gaur is the one. Adha Kumara is the one. ಜೊತೆ there is a catch here when we move from left to right right yeah, it, it's not a unidirectional one you can start with analysis and uh, over a time you figure out hey i don't have this data so probably you come back to stage 1 and then acquire that data and go back to stage 3 or you have a certain data and just just you want to analyze that and go do prediction analysis on only that set of data that flexibility is also available one of the things which organizations are uh, no uh, the trend which we talk about people do uh, in terms of uh, good and a bad thing is they try to accumulate all the data possible but they don't start using the data what they already have okay that's one of the common mistakes which you see uh, as one of the trends in the in the industry and it it can be any industry the uh, it can be like a business industry it can be the governments it can be any any uh, you know organization as such right when you have certain data the best way to do is go analyze that data make sure you have the right data and then figure out if the data has gaps go fix those gaps and continue rather than waiting for all the gaps to be completed and then start your analysis if you do that there is going to be two impact one you will lose time second you will not be able to compete because there is a competition out there who is doing better than you using a certain set of data and they are incrementally driving value this is where agile methodology also comes into picture so i'm going to talk about that a little more in terms of trends so on a whole data why do you need data data is really required to answer some of the business questions be it future be it past or be it present and depending on how you leverage that data you start to get answers to all of your business questions okay and ultimately data driven decisions uh, are really required once you get those insights you have to make sure you are driving decisions and if you broad bucket it what the decisions is going to entail it's going to entail only two things one is experience when i say experience it is going to either make somebody's life easier or the operational process much more easier or due to the experience it's going to increase your revenue the second one is optimization it's like it's going to make sure it's going to reduce your cost and give a great experience in turn so it's all about increasing your experience and revenue optimizing your experience and cost so ultimately everything boils down to these two things even for example when uh, uh, when when you uh, when you guys are actually talking to your students uh, you would have experienced this uh, it, it is not probably new is few uh, you know students uh, relate to a certain set of uh, uh, lecturers a lot more easier versus a different set of uh, students would relate to another set of lecturers and this is nothing to do with the lecturer or a student it is about their individual experiences the students has and affinity they have towards a certain subject or a module right assume that you in your class of like 50 students you you are able to figure out what each of those 50 students really 
is interested in and his way of uh, understanding a certain subject or a module the approach to the teaching is going to be completely different in the sense you would probably adopt a broad brush approach and an individualistic approach together to make sure your students are faring far better than any other uh, you know any other organization or any other educational institutions so that's the power of data and this is one simple example so now uh, now that we spoke about experience and optimization and where are all these data being captured we also uh, uh, you know saw it from an individual perspective what an individual does in the previous slide and now here is an organization standpoint is ultimately as a customer the organization is looking at making sure the customer knows the organization or the product and the person considers the product makes a purchase and make sure he retains let's let me take another simple example all of us have mobile phones and uh, most of us have asked either our friends or went on a website to really check before making a purchase of how the product is right we will look for reviews we will look for uh, the specification we will look for what our preferences are from that product and based on that we make some choices and that is this cycle what i'm talking about for example uh, if if there is a, a particular product and this happened to canon uh, uh, digital uh, camera some time ago this was like uh, four and a half years ago i believe they really they released a camera onto the shelf and uh, as soon as they got released in three days uh, there were people who were writing reviews that this camera is not good right and if i being here uh, in india is looking at a review from somebody who is not in india or in us or uk and making my decisions the geological boundaries have already been distorted so the data transition and data transmission is so much that a person anywhere sitting in the world is able to know about a product and able to make a choice on that product canon what they did was they actually had to take that product out off the shelf and after a couple of months they re-released the product with all the issues fixed so this is the consumer power and what the data really helps or disrupts an organization with in this case canon took it for their advantage they took the feedback and then they re-release the product with all the gaps which the customers were talking about now uh, let's go into a little more of industry specific trends we are going to move on uh, the reason why i spoke about all of this uh, so far is when we talk about industry trends and data trends all of this is related to why uh, in the in the last 10 15 minutes i just explained that is the why of how you see these trends actually materializing right i'm going to touch upon a couple of industries so that it will give a broad brush and then i'll go a little more into retail so that uh, uh, the reason for me to pick retail was uh, it was a covid time and uh, retail is the now uh, the in thing because people are looking at basic necessities how things are changing there so i'm just going to give a perspective of how things are changing in that space right uh, so in telecom uh, very recently before covid telecom companies were not doing great in the sense there were price competition there was a uh, huge competition in terms of uh, the bandwidth the new technologies and all of it and telecom companies were actually struggling to make profits with covid telecom companies actually have gained a lot more compared to other industries the reason why i say that is everybody is now uh, let's take simple example right we are doing this webinar uh, normally the industry sessions uh, used to happen in the premises people used to be there and then talk interact uh, you know one to one the webinars have increased the online channels have increased people talking on phone people talking on uh, video conferences have increased even the organizations are adopting this method so all the telecom companies and the broadband companies are benefited due to this and one of the key chain uh, challenges telecom companies even now have is churn rate in the sense uh, now that you have mobile portability as well uh, if airtel doesn't give me good uh, choices i'll go to vodafone if vodafone doesn't give me something good i'll go to reliance so customer has all of these app options and it becomes much more challenging for the organizations to make sure 
they understand the customer as well and then based on the data what they are able to access for the particular customer similarly auto industry again has not do has, has not been doing great in in the past in the last one and a half years very very challenging year for auto but data technology is one of the things is where automobile industry is using data now you will see a lot more online car sales come european companies have been trying this uh, 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 you know model out nissan is uh, selling their cars online now mercedes is selling their cars online maruti is also going to venture into something similar in the near future so they will be using the data to uh, start selling cars online which is a digital presence and data is most required for you and uh, all of that uh, that is where your mind and machine learning algorithm comes into picture in terms of how it interprets data how it interprets a particular pattern how it interprets imaging videos all of that so that is also what the ingredients uh, where uh, uh, you will see some of the trends changing healthcare uh, healthcare we have seen a lot of changes happening right in the, now there is uh, they do cataract without uh, intervention with the uh, you know a computerized thing so there is pattern recognition which is happening they are able to figure a classical example is the covid scenario where they are able to track patients and then figure out uh, if they are quarantined well and what they need to do how do how do they need to supply uh, things uh, uh, medicines or uh, medical equipment and all of that so everywhere data is being used i would like to also highlight one of the things in in my past where i worked on a healthcare engagement is uh, Uh, we worked on optimizing time taken for an organ uh, plant a you know, transplantation from moving from uh, point A to point B. For example, if there is a donor of heart and the heart needs to be trans transplanted to a, another person, which is who is a recipient in some other place, how do you make sure this organ gets to the desired location in the least amount of time? That's where your algorithm comes into picture. your data access comes into picture how much time it's going to take and how you can clear things so that's again where data is 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 being used similarly energy uh, one other classical problem which we have at this point in time is uh, uh, oil is being produced across the oil producing in, uh, countries and uh, those when it got when it gets produced they are loaded in container ships and those container ships typically sail across the arabian and come to uh, they, they are normally stationed somewhere in the middle east and then come to the required country so that they can unload the oil the reason for oil also uh, uh, dropping the, uh, the 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 price of the oil dropping is the consumption has been like completely reduced in the last few months or three months and all these containers are full they don't have any more oil to uh, really store and that's where you see even futures and options in terms of the stock market from a oil uh, standpoint is also taking a hit so there again the ships typically use data even the radar data the satellite data to make sure they are traversing in the right path to move from destination a to destination b so their data again is being used and in even in oil pipelines the amount of oil which is uh, being transported transported and the leaks and all of that is also being managed by data uh, in terms of electricity how much of electricity is being transported how much of electricity is being generated all of that there is uh, enough amount of data uh, which comes into picture there as well so data is pretty much everywhere travel and hospitality uh, we all know we have been booking uh, tickets and flight buses trains uh, using irctc or make my trip or any you know uh, ksrtc websites so that's again digital so that's where data is also being used again retail in in retail uh, pretty much uh, whenever there is a con consumption from a retail standpoint there is data which is generated the transactional data and for example if i am a retailer i need to stock products what are the products i would be stocking i don't want to just keep my inventory high 
all the time uh, so that it doesn't move, right? I want to procure it just in time and that's where again data will be used. Similarly, if there is a pattern of a consumer coming to me every month to buy like say toothpaste, soaps, rice, dal and all of that, I know a person, uh, this particular customer, his uh, usual consumption is X, Y, Z. How can I give him something more which he or she can buy? And how can I target that customer? How can I give promotions uh, or discounts so that he buys more from my shop versus another shop? So all of those are pretty much driven by data and everything what we spoke about underlying decisions are made based on the data which is accumulated over a period of time. A uh, little more in terms of, I'll just go a little, uh, uh, you know, deep into the detail trends, uh, like I said. So we spoke about data is really, really required, but uh, how do I really use this data and what for? One, I will use this data for operationally, operationalizing my business in the sense how I can optimize my uh, processes within the business. So I'll just take an example of retail. Right, uh, let's uh, take a, a simple retailer like a big bazaar or somebody, uh, right, who has a lot of products. They have uh, household uh, small equipments uh, like plastic equipments, they have uh, children food, they have uh, you know, sanitization, uh, daily needs like uh, toothpaste, uh, you know, and, uh, soaps, and all of that. They have necessities like rice, dal, and all of that. They even have some decoratory items and all of that in their shop. But if they have to target a certain set of customers, they need to have their wish list of data in the sense like uh, there are, assume there are 1 million customers who are visiting consistently who buy from this store. If they are unable to figure out when their customer comes next, hey, here is Pradyum now is coming in. And uh, typically, if he comes if he comes in the first week of the month, he's going to buy what is necessary for his house. If he comes in the second or the third week, I think he's going to buy something which is more, uh, which is not a real necessity sort of, but uh, he, he is willing to spend more amount of money for something fancy, right? For that, we call it as an industry or as a, a concept that is called as a single view of a customer. Look at it something like uh, from a single view of a customer, if the bank has uh, my name and I have different instruments, I have a SB account and uh, an FD account and uh, maybe a, a you know, she has transaction account or a DMAT account, something like that. If the bank is able to figure out, okay, this is the person who has all of this, how can I offer him a better product or how can I offer him a better service, right? For that, they need to look at bringing all of this data together. So one of the key trends in the industry which we see is data silos. And breaking this data silos is the most important thing. And this is the first step any organization looks at in terms of breaking silos. What does it mean from a technology standpoint? I'll just talk about it in a few minutes in terms of how you break the silos from a technology perspective, right? And once you have this stitched, then you know, okay, here is a customer A and uh, this person does A, B, C, D, right? And you will have similar sort of customers. Like for example, a customer who spends 5,000 rupees a month and you may have like 50,000 customers who spend 5,000 rupees a month on a certain similar sort of products. How do you know that? Data science algorithms really analyze this data and then take out the insights and it groups people into segments. There is segment A, B, C, there you, you can segment it in multiple different ways. A simple segment may be a person who spends zero to 5,000 is a, a low spending uh, a person, five to 10,000 is a medium spender and 10,000 above is a high spend. Let's, let's consider that. And if you want to recommend those people with certain set of things, then the recommendation comes in. Maybe if you want to, recommend a high profile fancy product to a zero to 5,000 spending customer, he may not even look at it. But if you target that and recommend that same product to a customer who is spending 10,000 above, 
he or she may be willing to look at it. That's how you try to cross sell and upsell uh, and also give a great experience to the customer. That's where recommendation comes in. And personalization, we have been talking about personalization. How can I really give the experiences of the next door shopkeeper through digital channels, right? Because the next door shopkeeper knows my face. He has been seeing me for so many years. He knows what I want. But how can I do it for my customer on a digital channel is where personalization comes in. That's where you start analyzing those data. Similarly, promotion and assortment and fulfillment. This is something which uh, any retailer mm -hmm. would need in the sense, mm -hmm. how do they replenish their stock? How do they make sure uh, if the stock is getting older, uh, they can uh, give discounts and clear off the stock? How do they fulfill each of those stores have right quantity of the products which is needed? And similarly, demand management. I don't want to order a product too early or I don't want to order a product too late. I want to order it when I need it and the time I need it, right? So how do I manage that? Otherwise, I will just be keeping my money uh, in, in, in a, I, I would be investing in my money, but that the product wouldn't have gone on sales. So that's where demand management comes into picture. Loyalty, if a person is consistently buying for, for from a certain uh, brand, uh, then how can I make sure uh, he or she sticks to that brand and how can I actually offer more uh, credit or benefits or brownie points to that person? The rest of the things is pretty much which is picked up due to the COVID situation. The planogram, the customer queue management, contactless delivery and curve. This was always there, but it has taken more precedence at this point in time. Uh, when I go into a shop, I don't want to wait because uh, now with the COVID, there is one meter distance you need to maintain or two meter distance you need to maintain. And if it is a small shop or a medium shop, you can have only a certain set of people getting into the store so that it's not, uh, you know, uh, very crowded inside. And for that, you will have to manage a queue. I, as a customer, I don't want to get into queue. I don't want to waste time standing there. So how are companies looking at managing or solving this problem is most of us uh, who go to the doctors uh, typically will uh, have uh, the, the concept of this. The queue is like basically you get a token, right? And uh, the, the, the doctor or uh, the, the compounder would say like, uh, oh, if your token, is, uh, token number is 10, each patient will probably take five minutes so you can come after 40 minutes. So that's where your time uh, uh, will come so you don't want if you have something go ahead get the thing sorted and come over in like 30 to 40 minutes so that you are there in the queue so similar concept is also being adopted from a digital standpoint right i can book a slot say i am free from 10 to 10 30 i'm going to tell them i'm going to come from 10 to 10 30 and for 10 to 10 30 assume there can only be 10 people who can come into the store so based on that 10 slots would be created and people will opt for a slot so that's how the queue management uh, in a very, very simple term is also being adopted. Contactless delivery. Pay through your digital wallets or online and then come and pick it up in store, right? Uh, the other thing is we will send it to your house. Make sure you're making the payment over a digital uh, platform. The curbside pickup is very prevalent in uh, uh, Western countries because there, uh, the the home delivery versus the curbside pickup. Uh, curbside pickup is uh, more, more prevalent. What does that mean? Is uh, curb means like a footpath, right? It it is uh, in front of the store. If there is a footpath, uh, whatever you have ordered, the store would have it in a box or packed, and they would place it in the on the curb. You just have to drive by. They'll place it in in your car, in your vehicle, and then you drive back. Nobody's going to touch. It's again contactless. And that's another thing which is happening out there. And I spoke about pre-order and collect uh, is another trend which is happening across uh, 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 the industry in retail. Similarly, you know, there is a lot of disruption uh, again. Uh, uh, I think I missed about talking about the banks uh, in terms of uh, in, the, in the previous slide. One of the things I just want to highlight there is banks are also becoming more like retail. We'll take an example of our post office service, right? Post office started off as logistics and they started, uh, you know, uh, the saving schemes. Now they have started, uh, you know, products from a monetary financial product standpoint. 
they are also servicing they are also doing service like uh, passport applications and bunch of those are also being handled by post office that's the evolution which you are seeing and when we talk about uh, like automobile another quick uh, uh, example or a statistic i want to give is this for a new car sales the margin the automobile service or the automobile agent or the automobile dealer gets or the organization oem gets is around 7 to 10% but when they are doing service the margins is close to 40% right uh, uh, sorry margin is close to 20 25% and when they are financing in the sense if i want to take a loan and then buy a car the finance generates a revenue of close to 40% so if you see now a uh, lot of the automobile companies are also having an option of self financing in the sense you need not go to sbi or hdfc or icici they will say like hey i have my own like maruti finance or uh, you know mercedes finance or what so what not and uh, i'll give you at a better rate uh, why don't you buy it from me and take the loan from me the reason they are doing that is it's 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 nothing but they are becoming a bank right so that's the level of disruption which the industry is creating and all of this insights are being generated by data and that's how our industries and the organizations are adopting data to make these transformations to take strategic decisions on where they need to be so this is all whatever i spoke about is why all of that data is required how the data uh, is enabling businesses and what sort of trends we are seeing which data is enabling so i'll just move on to a little bit of a technology trend when we talk about all of this what does it mean to us as technologists what should i focus on <clears throat> right so we talk about data yeah i know data is there so what what next right and uh, i know business is going to use it in a certain way but how is technology enabling those business use cases right so we'll talk about that a little bit uh so some of the top focus trends is uh whatever i have just listed in here and this is for just 2020 right 20 there are some of these uh, which has been moved from 2019 and uh, what is going to come in 2020 is what you see here but before getting into this uh one of the things i also spoke about was uh, when we take all of this data uh, you can start figuring out what the customer wants and there is an ethical debate of uh, how much deep you want to go or can go in terms of knowing the customer and how much you how, when where do you need to stop right so that is where data security and privacy comes into picture uh, from a more policy perspective but that also means like when you capture all of this data and you have it in your server tomorrow a hacker should not hack a bank data we have all seen some of these instances happening so that they take all the credit card numbers away and then misuse it in, in, in a different place so how do you put checks and balances how do you make sure the data is encrypted well how do you make sure only the right people have access to data and there is a governance policy and the governance process which is implemented across what does it take to do it there is a workflow which needs to be done and all of this are it, it, there are tools which can do this or you can develop this custom and it is all technology so that's one of the areas data security and privacy is something which is going to be like huge uh, going forward india also is coming coming up with its own data, data security and policy as well now the government has already said that you cannot store the data which you are generating within the company outside uh, within the country outside the country right in the sense if you are generating data for indian consumers you cannot go and store that data in the cloud somewhere in the us so each each country has something similar like european countries have something like gdpr us has something like hepa <clears throat> so there are multiple uh, data security and privacy policies which are out there in, adopted by individual countries uh, the next one is data quality uh, if you just uh, roll back to what i just said is you have so much of data and you try to look at what it gives in the past the insights on the past the insights in the present and the insights or what can be the hypothesis for the future but assume if the data whatever is captured is not right it is incorrect data or insufficient data so that's where data quality management comes into picture it can be as simple as i have stored 
a person's credit card number as a text versus a number right or i have stored a transactional amount as not as a currency but something else inside the database right uh, so these kind of issues also will derail the data systems uh, so you need to make sure your quality is right you are making sure the data which is uh, out there is all right and all of that comes into data quality management data as a service uh, and data monetization is uh, uh, forward looking uh, things and some companies are already doing it google is one classical example on this if you look at google analytics google sells data and they are actually whatever the data they have captured they anonymize that and sell it right that's where they are making money out of the data what they have captured so far in so many years data as a service is uh, again google as an example is if you have analytics uh, in your website google says like i will give you how many people came in when did they come in what all they did and all of that again anonymized data where you are giving out your data as a service to somebody this can be within the organization or outside the organization if it is within the organization or outside the organization again there are a lot of policies and procedures which would come in even for data monetization so that is another thing which is going to, which you going to see in in the next coming years ai and ml artificial intelligence and machine learning we have seen artificial intelligence being very you know loosely used as well you know now people say like oh now there is artificial intelligence you can do pretty much everything right uh, but the problem here is uh, in artificial intelligence when you write those machine learning algorithms you need to productionize it from a research standpoint and from doing a small uh, you know uh, proof of concepts it it all works fine but when you put into a commercial use then the scalability of these models on huge data sets be it petabytes of data or gigabytes of data whatever that number is going to be how far can it scale what is the time does it take to process how and what is the efficiency what is the accuracy of these models right and how can you automate this because i can't be going running models for uh, if i if i'm doing a real time analysis of data i can't be running uh, uh, mi uh, ai ml algorithm every 15 minutes on like say 250 gb of data uh, right which is coming in into my systems on a runtime basis so how do you commercially make it viable is still a challenge in the sense i'm not saying that it, there is no solution there but this is one of the things we can see in the uh, next future <clears throat> the other thing is automation i spoke about automation visualization you have all of this data but how can you really make sense out of it insights rather than just bar charts and graph charts or pie charts what is a better way of how you can visualize this data the other two things uh, in terms of uh, people talk about data 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 but is my organization is my uh, uh, company data driven is that culture there people started with that so that's another technology blockchain nlp all of these are some Yes, that's where you see more of this data coming in. So I'll just take another minute or two in terms of what technologies entail to achieve all of this, and then uh, I'll open up for any questions uh, which the audience may have. Right. So we spoke about data. So to achieve all of whatever we have been talking so far, the simple steps. as a concept and as a terminology is you have to acquire the data and put it in a place which is ingestion of that data and you need to transform that data in the sense to to the shape and form which it is really uh, you know apprehendable and then make sure the quality and governance is out there i just spoke about that and also making sure you can report out of it in the sense the data can really be consumed rather than just be stored right the monitoring logging and automation is all systemic processes if you don't do these things then you will not be able to scale 
uh, your uh, applications and systems for the larger good. What does this include? Whatever I just spoke about is depicted in this data processing cycle, right? You take that, you take the data, you make sure the data is, uh, you make sure the data can be used in the shape and form. You kind of combine it, analyze it, and mine it. If there is something which is not there, then go back to acquisition of the data and then make sure you're reporting on top of it and using it from, from your downstream systems like activation and all of that. What does it take from a skill set standpoint? Uh, data has like three skill sets majorly in the industry to achieve all of this. One is the engineering, which is heavy lifting, making sure you're getting that data, cleaning it up, doing the quality process and all of that. The analytics is basically, how do you take that data and start making sense out of the data? And data science is how do you make sure the algorithms are running and it can be scalable in the sense I, I can't be doing manual activity, but I'll be able to use some of my algorithms to scale my processing, to scale my prediction, to uh, do analysis on top of the data. That's where data science comes into picture. So these are, I would say, executional skills, right? And covering that is strategy and consulting. When we talk about strategy and consulting, uh, uh, if I have some work to do, then the engineering science and analytics comes into picture. But how do I define my work? How do I tell my clients what they need to do? How do I make sure there is a plan to what they need to do from beginning to the end? How do I make sure that plan is helping them in their business? All of that comes under strategy and consulting which is supported by execution, which is delivery on the right and research on the left. So that's a whole gamut of what it takes to really drive data into the ground and into our lives. So whatever you see in Amazon, whatever you see on your mobiles, there are these skills which are running behind to make it happen. And this is what typically the students come out with doing projects, you know, learning uh, different toolkits and all of that. Okay, so now with that, you need data science, you know, you need engineering, and then uh, you need analytics. So, what does that mean, right? So, from a tools and technology, typically it's the standard uh, toolkits like you use Java, Scala, Python, and all of that from a data processing perspective or even analysis. Hello, sir. We are not audible. Hello, Pradhima sir, we are not audible. Request all the participants to wait for one minute. Speaker is connecting back.
Ele vai estar né? Uh, am I audible? Okay, okay. You're audible, sir. Uh, sorry, I, I was just thrown sir. out. I don't know what happened. 
Yes, sir. Kindly share the screen, sir. Now. Can you please enable the screen share for me? Okay. okay. Hello, Pradinam, sir. Yeah. You have ascended as a presenter. Sir. You can share the screen now. Yeah, I just got the option. Yes. Uh, are you able to see my screen now? Not yet, sir. Not yet. Yes, sir. Now, now it is visible, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. I don't know where I lost. <laughs> Can I restart from this slide or uh, I don't know where I got lost? Yes, sir, you can start. Yes, yes, you can start, sir. Okay, so uh, what I was saying is uh, for all the three typical uh, skills, uh, what is needed to solve business problems, what does it take from a technology standpoint, right? So from a tools and technology uh, for data, what, what we use is earlier we used to use tools like ETL, Informatica and all of it with big data coming in. Typically, the programming languages are the ones which uh, now make the cut like Java, Python, uh, you know, Scala. These are the ones which we use from uh, uh, the aspects and there are tools for analytics like Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics and all of it. The other key uh, aspect or the skill which uh, people who want to get into data should or be aware of, should know or be aware of is basically the cloud and DevOps. Uh, it can be the Amazon AWS cloud or it can be Azure, the Microsoft one or uh, Google platform GCP. All these are uh, pretty much uh, you know prevalent. Uh, Again, there is a trend there. Retailers typically don't uh, go into Amazon because they see Amazon as a competition. Microsoft Azure and uh, Google are pretty much neutral and uh, that's how Microsoft Azure and Google are also slowly gaining momentum in terms of uh, what, what they are uh, uh, looking at from a market capture perspective. The other thing is microservices. When we talk about microservices, uh, one of the things is basically you need to start we, we don't develop huge applications like earlier, like a monolith, right? Uh, because the technology is changing, things are changing at such a fast pace. I'm just gonna share another slide uh, in, in, in the next uh, minute or so, where uh, you can see how fast the technology and tools are changing. Microservices enables us to do a plug and play and also productionize in the sense, go to live or like uh, get it live in a very, very uh, fast time without impacting work and without impacting the application. So that's where microservices is something which is going to be the uh, new norm and it is already picked up. It is not a trend anymore, I would say. These are, I would say, prerequisites for any data person or as a whole, a person who wants to be a technologist. These are some of the fundamental things what the person should know. Security, conceptually, security is something which they should be aware of. Uh, need not be implementation level but at least if they understand the concepts of security what does it mean why what to do and what not to do do's and don'ts should be sufficient to start off with from a toolkit perspective for data <clears throat> a little more uh, in terms of the business trends uh, this is something called as a hype curve and uh, we as an organization as data practice and uh, technologists we follow these things we follow gartner hype curve we follow forrester uh, trend model and bunch of things is something uh, which at least for example i look at it as soon as these things come out and uh, typically uh, they keep updating it in terms of where the technology trends are going to be 
how are things and this is also an input for organizations to invest in a certain skill right so whatever you see here uh, this is just for an information right uh, whatever you see like uh, the the analytics governance and uh, data cataloging and all of that is uh, actually gone away in the sense <clears throat> it was there earlier but it is not more any more relevant and uh, what you see here uh, like say outdoor location intelligence and uh, logical data warehouse outdoor location intelligence is nothing but your gprs location sort of a thing right which uh, which you can see in your google maps and all logical data warehouse is a very fundamental thing so that is not a trend or something which is going to come in the future it has already come right the way you need to look at the curve is where you start and where it matures and then where it plateaus that's how the curve is red and the light blue ones is some of the trends which you will see in the next two to five years again these are the bets which the organization take which the research team takes and how you build capability and the dark blue ones are something which is like five to ten years and any triangles are more than 10 years i haven't seen any more than 10 years or five to ten year uh, max trends uh, is the one which we see because again like i said the technology trends are so so dynamic at this point in time every other month or every quarter we see like hundreds of new tools and uh, technologies coming in <clears throat> similarly uh, another hype curve the one which i showed you earlier was for business intelligence and data the one which you are seeing now is the artificial intelligence one right uh, so again if you see ro uh, robotic process automation rpa was something which was talked uh, last year uh, i think uh, late 2018 is when rpa started picking up momentum 2019 there have been some implementations already at least i know i have done like one or two implementations of rpa <clears throat> in in my uh, uh, current organization and uh, graph analytics machine learning and all of that again were being talked about which is now the trend it is picking up it is going to scale in the near future and that is what is going to come in uh, if you really look at some of the orange ones like uh, autonomous vehicles or quantum computing these are the ones which we see as a trend though it talks about more than 10 years as a trend or they are predicting it my personal belief is this is going to be somewhere between five to ten years even the quantum computing we are already talking about uh, vrs right <clears throat> virtual reality and uh, we are already talking about bunch of those things which are being used uh, in in my uh, you know current workplace we are already testing out some of the vr work uh, and IoT is something which we have done in like three years ago. We had done IoT integration and all of it. So all of that is already, it, it's no more a trend. It has become a norm. Whatever you see in trend is something which uh, 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 you, you can see here. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I think this is pretty much the last slide I have. Uh, now that we know all of this, how does the landscape change? If you just see on the left side, uh, what, what you see here is basically there are around 8,000 plus tools. It's not visible. There are small, small logos out there, but this is how fast the industry is changing. And this is as of this year, right? And there has been a 25.5% increase in the number of tools just in data space from last year. So this is the kind of pace we are seeing in how many tools are coming into the market, how many technologies are coming into the market, how things are changing, and it is changing as rapidly as we can think of. So I'm sure you'll not be able to read all the logos in here. These are very, very small ones, but if you can zoom in, then you'll be able to see this. But typically this is only from a marketing technology landscape. Similarly, if you do it from a different landscape, uh you will have probably much more tools which are available out there so what i want uh, to leave uh, with with the audience is though we have so much of data though we have so much of analysis we are trying to make sense of all of this data from customer from business and all of that standpoint how do we process this the fundamental process and mechanisms wouldn't change but 
the tools and technologies are going to keep changing over a period of time and hopefully it's going to be you know much simpler easier and complex uh, in, in terms of complex from solving business complex problems but implementation standpoint and how we take it i'm sure there is going to be a lot more changes which is going to come in and it's probably going to be much more democratized is what i call it in 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 the future where you need not have a real real data scientist maybe 5 years down the line to really implement algorithm maybe the algorithm will become more like a marketplace you just like drag and drop a certain algorithm and then you will be able to use that with the code it already generates that's what we have seen over a period of time how uh, technology has also evolved so i'm just going to leave that thought with you here and uh, this is how the landscape is changing that is what the trend you see in data not just from a business but also technology and tools perspective so uh, thank you again i'll probably open up in case if there are any questions maybe i can uh, uh, you know take some questions and hopefully <clears throat> i hope this was uh, useful for the audience Am I audible? Am I audible? thank you sir for your wonderful session and i hope all the participants enjoyed the session uh, now i request professor prashant k sir a uh, cold of this webinar to render vote of thanks over to you sir thank you honorable chairman sri janakunde basra sir respected principal dr sm sashidhar sir and uh, our beloved hod dr prasham sir our most valuable resource person mr pradyumna and all the faculty of our uh, and our dear participants and coordinators <coughs> i prashant k assistant professor csc department and coordinator of this event uh, feel privileged to have been asked to propose a word of thanks on this occasion on behalf of cs department i extend a very heartly vote of thanks to all honorable chairman sri janakunte basra sir who blessed us with his gracious presence and took out valuable time of your busy schedule thank you very much sir i must mention our deep sense of gratitude to our below principal dr sm shishida sir for his kind gesture of support thank you sir i would like to extend a special thanks to mr pradyumna a senior director and chief transformation officer publicis event bangalore for his inspiring us and rendering us with his valuable knowledge so thanking you sir i would like to thanks uh, professor osantama madam and uh, mr professor maltesh k for their efforts and organizing this webinar i am grateful to our uh, beloved hod dr prasham sir for giving this opportunity to organize this event thank you very much sir last but not least i heartily thanks and congratulates all the participants for their active participation and making it grand success uh, as you as no program can become a successful with a single person so i extend my big thanks to our department teaching and non teaching staff for their support and efforts thanks you all for making this event grand success thank you once again thank you all thank you sir have a nice day thank you prashant sir uh, i think it was very informative session uh, all the participants might have enjoyed uh, you had learned a very good things and uh, i thank to resource person mr pradyumna sir for giving a wonderful session now i request our hod sir to speak few words
thank you manish sir thanks all the participants for your active participation i request all the participants to undergo one more webinar shortly the department is conducting a webinar on blockchain technology we are going to intimate the information very soon please take the active participation thanks for your support thank you thank you one and all thank you sir thank as you. sir has told soon from the department of computer science and engineering pda hospital we are organizing a blockchain technology uh, webinar in in a span of another 10 days and all the participants we have just shared the feedback link uh, in the chat box and we have shared through whatsapp also kindly fill the feedback after filling the feedback only you are able to receive the e certificate through your registered email only so it will come in a span of one or two minutes so first you fill the feedback then you will be able to receive the e certificate those who have not uh, received any e certificate can uh, you know, call us at any time or you can uh, uh, send any email or a message through whatsapp so we will send the another link i think current link is working well all are receiving already so if any doubts you can uh, uh, discuss with us so thank you all the participants and i thank the resource person we'll end this meeting and we'll uh, uh, meet in another uh, webinar soon thank you all